Let's now discuss the observational evidence for black holes. We'll start with the one that is usually described in detail to all introductory astrophysics students, Cygnus X1. Located in the constellation Cygnus, near the bright star Eta Cygni, at a visual magnitude of 9, it can be actually picked out with a backyard telescope. These images from the Space Telescope Science Institute's DSS-2 photographic survey show its position and relative brightness to Eta Cygni. Zooming in, we see an artist's impression of this fiducial X-ray binary. Discovered in 1964, Cygnus X1 is consistently the brightest source of high-energy X-rays in the sky. We see here its appearance in X-rays from the Chandra X-ray Observatory. The angular size of the image is about 1.5 arc minutes, or about the same angular diameter as a big crater on the moon. The spectrum on the right shows a Doppler-broadened ionized iron emission line from close to the black hole. Initial astrometric measurements from 1972 to 1974 led it to be the first astronomical object widely accepted to be a black hole. Since then, it has been studied extensively due to its proximity and brightness. The optical counterpart is a late-type O9 supergiant, with a mass estimated between somewhere 20 and 40 solar masses. Based on stellar evolution models that utilize its observed spectrum, as well as VLBA and Gaia astrometric measurements, Cygnus X1 is estimated now to be approximately 2,220 parsecs distance. With this distance, and using a light curve that shows a 5.6-day non-eclipsing period, it was found to have a nearly circular orbit of 0.2 astronomical units, approximately half the distance between the Sun and Mercury. Since an O-type supergiant would be about 15 or so times the size of the Sun, this star reaches about halfway to the black hole. The star is about 0.1 AU in size, or one-tenth the size of the Earth-Sun distance. Supergiant stars really are big. Now, this star isn't expected to be currently overfilling its Roche lobe, so the artistic impression here is due to the massive stellar winds that are present in stars like these. But the effect is the same. Material dumps off the star and creates an accretion disk around the black hole. We know it must be a black hole because numerous measurements put the compact object's mass somewhere between 14 and 21 solar masses. There is some tension, but the higher mass estimate uses the astrometry from the VLBA and Gaia to pin the distance very tightly. The higher measurement seems to be the current consensus for the mass of the black hole. No matter what, both of these are much larger than the tolman oppenheyer volkoff limit of about 2.2 solar masses. The accretion disk of Cygnus X1 is known to be relatively small due to the rapidity of the X-ray bursts. For example, if an X-ray burst occurs within a millisecond, this implies that the region emitting the burst can't be larger than 300 kilometers across. Thus, the event horizon must be smaller than this size, marking 300 kilometers as the upper limit for it. We know from before that the event horizon for a 15 solar mass black hole will be about 45 kilometers, so the X-ray bursts are coming from the innermost ring of the accretion disk. So, this artist's impression is really wrong, isn't it? The black hole's shadow could not be seen against the incredibly bright disk, and the disk would be approximately 15,000 kilometers in size, or about 300 times larger than the black hole. Also, the disk is only 15,000 kilometers in size, and that's nothing compared to the 30 million kilometer diameter star. So the star is 2,000 times bigger than the disk, and the disk is 300 times bigger than the hole. So yeah, the artwork is really not to scale. As for where the black hole came from, assuming a 15 solar mass black hole, the star that formed it must have had a mass greater than 40 solar masses, we can also deduce this because the binary pair seems to be part of the Cygnus OB3 stellar association, and the largest known star in that group is 40 solar masses. This black hole must have formed from a bigger star that evolved much more quickly than the current most massive star. Come on, what's up? Such a huge star could have ended its life as a collapsar. It might have never made a supernova and just collapsed directly down to a black hole without exploding. 
Prior to this destructive event, the star would have been shedding mass rapidly as a wolf at star. Its companion O-star would have accumulated some of that star's stellar wind. And indeed, it does have elevated helium compared to other O-stars, so the scenario of a massive wolf at star collapse R is a likely model. Cygnus X1 is typically held up as a prime example of stellar mass black holes. There really are not a huge number that are known, only a few dozen known or candidate black holes of this mass range. So you'll likely hear about Cygnus X1 from many places as you look into high-energy astrophysics. <laughs>